All right, slightly different approach to videos today. We're actually going to be taking a look at the market for Outlaws of Thunder Junction on day one. Official release. You can buy them. There's no more pre-orders and all that jazz. It's out here. And as usual, a lot of things have really started to go down in price. I always like to tell people, try to be cautious when pre-ordering because you may end up way overpaying, especially with the way a lot of the market for pre-ordering works. TCG Player is a great source to buy cards and find things competitively, but... Their pre-sale system, only certain stores can list, and typically you see a lot of stuff sell really high early on that ends up dropping way, way out a little bit later. So, we're going to just kind of go through and take a look at the market today, sort of seeing what has gone up, what has gone down, and I've got a ton of tabs open, which you guys probably can't see due to the layout, but we'll talk about everything here. So, we're going to just kind of jump right into it, um, and obviously, if you guys do enjoy the video, go ahead, like that video, and subscribe, click the bell icon to stay notified when new videos are posted. Um, but yeah, so if we sort this high to low just for the main set, you'll see Tiny Bones is actually going to be the most expensive card in the set right now um, at about uh, $20, give or take, 22 if you look for lowest verified, and the foil is around 35 uh, Last night, I mean, you can see the chart on this guy, right? So he bottomed out to about 15 and went back up to as high as 28 There were actually sales yesterday and even today, realistically, uh... Someone bought twenty seven eighty five. Someone bought, looks like third. Nope, that's a foil. So yeah, there there were a lot of sales. The price is very fluctuating on this guy. Um, I do think he's going to be really really strong in multiple formats. But it was just interesting to see him go up already. Um, but I think there was a little bit of maybe artificial inflation there, and now as people are listing and trying to buy it out, um, you'll see a good bit of it. The foil, I, I think at 35-ish right now, I don't know what the cheapest one is. There's only 10 listings, so 47.99 is actually the cheapest available foil. That's pretty steep, but I guess it depends on your level of confidence in the card and whether or not it's going to, um, you know, hold that value. It is the the rarest version of it and if you if you like and prefer that showcase style um you know he's not a bad pickup but just you know be cautious it, it seems like one of those things where it could be you know early hype the regular versions of him are around 16 dollars sometimes i know like it's a bit of a different format live video here so 1876 if you factor in shipping 20 bucks i mean you're around either way i personally would go for the showcase if it's that close to the same price because typically it'll be the one that'll do better over time um but obviously that that doesn't always mean that so i mean he's at the top of the list for the core set stuff terror of the peaks is actually holding on relatively well at around 22 dollars with shipping for the cheapest um and the foils closer to like 40 plus this is a really good card obviously and its other versions have done quite well for themselves i mean it's it's extended art from core set 2021 is much more expensive obviously a lot of time has passed since that set came out it's older there's you know different factors to consider but if you think this card you know if you like this art better or you think this card has potential to see that similar type of of, uh, of of rise, then that's good. But I mean, looking at the chart here, it started out and it has just plummeted, though it has started to rebound a little bit. So this will be an interesting one to watch simply because it's not just good in one specific format, but it has not been in standard for a long time. So it will be very interesting to see what type of impact it has in standard, I think. Slickshot Showoff is one we talked about quite a lot in terms of being one of the best-selling cards. This has tons of application in Standard, but it's also really good in other formats, I'm told. And I think, you know, any Is It decks are going to look at this as, a, as an option. It is just a very low-cost, low-to-the-ground you know, card you can play. It bottomed out around $6 going back a couple weeks ago and now is selling at around, well, $13.65 is the cheapest tier. They were $22 yesterday. So, I mean, people were buying these. It's a, it's a big drop for that, for what that's worth. Um, just going back to even, I'm, there's so many sales from today. They're selling like crazy. I was trying to see if it would let me go back to um, the 18th, which I don't even know if, like, I mean, it just, again, these are all today. These are flying. There have been probably over 100 sales on this just today, and you're seeing the selling high, and people are scooping them up, obviously, as tons of, of people and some people got them at like eight like you got good deals if you were looking around probably around midnight um but yeah so you can see just just from this morning to now how much the price has gone up and how much they've actually been selling uh so just a really really strong card i don't know whether or not we're gonna see anything and this is again live editing here on this video which goes against what i typically like to do but oh well ledger shredder is another card i think of when this card came out you know it ended up bottoming out to a very low price 
Um, even if we go back to like a year, I don't know. See, you can see it was up really high, then it bottomed out, then it started to rebound. Um, and this card's been out for, you know, almost a couple of years. I, I think this could very well go the same type of direction as Ledger Shredder. Uh, I just don't know if it's going to bottom out more before it rises again. And that's that's definitely one you'll have to make some educated guesses on. Um, but this card, you know, all it's going to take is for this card to do something in, in significant competitive events. And the price will probably continue to rise. So, yeah, it's 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 a really, really good card. It's got, obviously, the, the promo pack version, the pre-release version, and an extended art version. Um, but just a, just a solid... Um, a solid card that I think is going to be one people are going after. Uh, Satoru, I just wanted to mention because yesterday he was selling really high. There were listings of this card at like 18 to $20 yesterday. And again, trying to get the price data just from yesterday is going to be hard because it's, it's going to show me, you know, all kinds of different things from today. But it was up pretty high last night yesterday before pre-sales lifted and it has significantly tanked since then of course um so it's a good card i do think it's possible it could have more demand but i think as more copies hit the market it's just gonna sell more it's not a mythic it's not extremely good in like everything so i don't think it's gonna see the type of demand that other cards have i just think this is probably gonna end up i wouldn't pay over five bucks for this personally uh but i mean obviously you're all gonna make your own choices and if it's a card you need and you have a lot of confidence in We'll see what happens. I mean, can't can't, can't call them all. Uh, one of them I'm really high on is Insatiable Avarice. So really, really good card. It's obviously not on the level of Demonic Tutor, Vampiric, etc., but still a really good card with a lot of flexibility. I picked up one of these yesterday. Uh, the extended art for about six dollars. It's a strong card. It's like four dollars right now. I want to say it's it, it's probably a safe pickup at three. I would think. I mean, I definitely grabbed it i think this card could very well uh be a good addition to uh, specifically a lot of commander decks i mean having access to extra things and then the flexibility to draw them if you need them this you know for three black mana you draw three cards lose three life it's like sign in blood so if you're getting an extra card there's just a good bit of versatility with this and i think that's something to keep in mind when looking at that um i'll go through these rather quickly but the fast lands are all at a really really good price two dollars and fifty cents plus shipping for spire bluff botanical sanctum is like 96 cents at the cheapest again like these are good lands that that are probably gonna rebound back up in the future uh concealed courtyard this one's gotten a couple more prints i think but still 53 cents 33 cents i mean you can't go wrong it's better than having just uh you know your straight tap lands especially for commander uh blooming marsh another one i think is pretty darn good a dollar 17 of course cops going by as i'm recording this video uh so you know a good one inspiring vantage i think uh was one of the ones that was holding a little bit higher a dollar 69 plus shipping but you know just again all these lands super cheap uh in terms of what they were at before uh, Obika Splitter of Seconds, a really, really popular card for Commander. I think people are going to try to play this all over the place. Um, only about $1.69 right now, so just something to keep in mind on that card. There are a few other versions from, like, Promo Pack, which I don't even know if that's out yet. Um, and then pre-release versions of stuff, $7 on the pre-release. But a good card and probably, you know, at this point, going to be really popular. Not a bad pickup, though, if it's a card you were interested in. I was looking at the breaking news stuff too. There, there's obviously the textured foil market. I don't know what this is going to look like. We really haven't seen a lot of textured foil in a core set, so it's hard to say. I mean, all the textured foils have gone down historically from other sets over time, but there are some really good cards here. Mana Drain, obviously, it's a very premium version of Mana Drain. Same with Mind Break Trap. Less application, I think. It's a really good card. It's just played less. Um, but generally speaking, I, I don't know. I can't really comment too much on the market for the, the textured stuff just because I don't know what to expect or where it's going to go. Um, but yeah, I mean, the textured foil started out pre-selling around 250. It's down now to like 199. People are going to try to move them quick. Manager might be one that rebounds quite nicely, though, just because of the fact that it's such a popular card and it's a premium variant. But, you know, again, hard to say. Mind Break Trap was pretty high up as well. Um, actually, it looks like it might be moving upwards versus where it was. It started out around one, you know, 180, 75 even at one point. Um, and, and even if we go back a little bit here to see this, it's been steadily rising versus some other stuff. 220 at the cheapest. I just think, again, another card that doesn't have a lot of premium variants, and people are probably going to want to get their hands on this one. This could be the most expensive one when all is said and done in terms of the actual set uh, layout. Oko, Thief of Crowns, of course, banned in some formats, but extremely good. Um, this one has just gone relatively down a lot, uh, about 112. I think he's going to fall under 100 at some point if you give it a little bit of time. Uh, good card, though. If you want to get a premium version of it, it's going to be a decent option, depending on, you know, 
where you get your price point. Leyline Binding is another card I feel like is really good. Another it just has completely gone way down, uh, down to 85, 72, 99. Uh, pretty decent, but I think, again, I think you can wait. I think this art is going to be niche to some people. Some people aren't going to like it, uh, so hard, hard to say, but good card. Um, and and uh, certainly affordable in other variants, without a doubt. Uh, Mana Drain is at $31, the cheapest a Mana Drain has been in quite some time. Um, and I honestly, I mean, I don't think it's going to go much lower than that. Historically speaking, the last reprint we had was Double Masters 22. That went back up to 50. I'm realizing now that that's probably slightly off screen, but that went back up to 50 if you see that. Um, as I kind of move some things around here. Uh, but again, $30 for a Mana Drain is not bad. I don't love the artwork on it, but I mean, if the card is functionally going to work, then you can't really go wrong there. I just, I don't think it's going to fall much less. It's, it's too good of a card. Mindbreak Trap, interestingly enough, has fallen quite a lot uh, for the regular version. It's like 29 now, 24 actually is the lowest. I pulled one uh, last weekend and sold it for 32. So, I mean, the price has gone down from there. Foil is around 60-ish. It's a really good card, the OG Zendikar one, and then now you have the textured foil. So this is kind of in that middle of the road where I don't know what the you know, demand is going to be. I also don't know how many people are going to be playing this card in, in multiples, you know, in Commander. Um, it, it's definitely the older formats that are probably going to make more use of this, but still a good card that was like 70 and is now 25, so that's a good drop. Force of Vigor, another really, really good card, um, down to 679. That's just a crazy drop. I mean, even pre-selling, it started at like 25, so the fact that it's gone down that much and that people are scooping it up, again, I think this will go back up over time. There's a lot of other versions of it. Modern Horizons one's down to 11. The list reprints down to 15. Good card and definitely not a bad opportunity to pick it up. Um, my sort of steal of the day, if you will, Reanimate is uh, $3.95. This is a crazy low price for this card. Even if you don't like the artwork, every time Reanimate has been reprinted, it has gone back up. I will show you data here. Um, Commander Collection Black was back up to like 15. Jumpstart, this was at one point at like 13. Uh, same with the Middle Earth one. The announcement of this new one did bring these down a little bit, but historically they all rebound up to over 10. And I think at some point you're going to see the same thing with this. So now would be the time to buy them super cheap and then have copies for other decks i just think you can't really go wrong with three dollars for a card that's that good that majority of decks that play black are going to want to have access to that so it's just it's, it's too good to to pass up on in my opinion and finally the big score um really hard to tell how this set's actually going to shake out because it's just it's kind of weird um in terms of its actual overall layout and i've been just looking across the, the board at some of it i there's a lot of good cards here but we don't really know too much about what their applications are actually going to be yet at this juncture. Uh, Sword of Wealth and Power is probably the biggest card coming out of this, according to what I've seen from most people. The showcase version of it's actually around 61, and they're steadily rising, which makes me think that maybe the pull rates aren't, you know, are a little harder than people thought. Over $96, I think, for the foil, so not, not terrible. Um, 95 is the cheapest. I think this is an interesting call because there are other variants of it. The regular extended art, much cheaper at 38, 39. Foils around 56. I think the showcase is going to be kind of in high demand. Um, but don't forget, there is also that raised foil version, which is going for just crazy prices here at like 215, 242. Um, hard to say again, where it was starting out at 300. It looks really nice. It's noticeably different. I just, I don't know what this market's going to look like on these. Um, and one other one I wanted to mention, of course, uh, Simulacrum Synthesizer, really, really good card. Holdings pretty steady around 15. Hasn't really dipped a ton. I mean, even pre-sale prices were 17, so it's staying pretty darn close. Big score is going to be interesting to watch a little bit over time. You know, loot, the, all the raised foils. I don't know if that can be a flash in the pan. Are they going to hold their value? It's hard to say. Um, but there are some really, really strong cards in here. Obviously, loot is going to be popular. Uh, Vaultborn Tyrant just is a really good card in general. Um, and then a lot of these other cards we talked about in other videos. So just a bit of an overview of the market. I think it's moving nicely. I think there is an opportunity to get some stuff at good prices, but I think if you wait a little bit, some things may also drop, but there's also that chance that something does well and kind of catches on and, and gets bought out. So I would say do your research, make the best decisions that you can, decide what's going to be best for your deck. Otherwise, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you in or out on some of the prices for Outlaws of Thunder Junction? And let me know what you've been buying, but otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Peace.